Hello, in this video lesson I'm going to show you how to process a shot to create colour infrared style images like this one here. Now there's quite a lot going on, we've got a variety of shifts in colour. The yellows and the greens of the grass here have become orange, which is a trademark of infrared photography, and the blues of the sky have gone more towards the cyan. There's other infrared type things going on as well, like these uh, trees here. When you shoot with infrared film, or if you've not got an infrared filter in your camera, then the light tends to bounce off the foliage and you get this kind of snowy white effect, which is called the wood effect. Um, named after somebody called Wood, not because it's to do with organic material. So there's a lot going on here and we're going to end up using adjustment layers to change our colours and tweak their hue individually and also using levels just to tweak tones and we've got a mask here as well which is blending a monochrome version with the colour version just to bring in this wood effect that we like to see in our infrared photographs. But we're going to kick off with a start image and I'm going to tweak the tones because you've got a very underexposed foreground here so we'll just bring out some of that detail first of all in a raw version of the image and then we'll start processing it in the standard Photoshop Elements editor. So kick off by going to file open and browsing to this file here which is infraredstart.dng. It's a digital negative file so it will automatically open up in your camera raw editor and here we can get the best from its colours and tones before we then start being more creative using adjustment layers in the standard Photoshop Elements editor. So let's start with tackling the most obvious problem in the shot, the underexposed foreground here in the shadows. It's struggling to get a balance between keeping detail in the sky and capturing detail in these darker areas and it's kind of prioritised for the sky. So what we can do is target these areas here by dragging fill light to the right. It's like having a giant fill flash zapping the scene and if we take that up to around about 60 we'll get much more detail from our underexposed shadows like so. And the cool thing about using fill light is it's lightening these areas without overexposing the correctly exposed sky. I'm just going to tweak the brightness a little bit because it does look a little bit bright. If I take that down to around about maybe 38 or so, that will just bring back a little bit of the darker details there and get a better contrast. And then we're going to tweak the colour. If we take the temperature up and warm that a little bit to 7000, then that gives us some nice yellowy vegetation which we can then warm up even more to create the nice orange colours that you get with infrared photography. I'm also going to tweak the tint as well and we'll take that just a little bit more towards the magenta at 21. Now when we get to using the convert to black and white command we can actually darken the blue skies and create this dramatic look you get with infrared photographs and also when you darken the skies the clouds tend to pop out a wee bit more and to actually have some colour information to work with we need to boost the colour here with the blues and we can do that with the vibrant slider. If we drag that to the right then you'll get nice strong looking colours. Around about 50 should just bring out some more of those blues. Let me just untick preview to show you the start image and then this version here so it's much warmer there's more detail here too and uh, it looks much much better. We're now ready to open it up in the standard Photoshop Elements editor and we can do that by clicking open image. So here we are in the standard Photoshop Elements editor with all of its commands and tools to play with and we're going to kick off by making sure we've got the layers palette up. If you go to window layers and make sure it's ticked then you can see our locked background thumbnail. Now if you click on there and press Control and J or Command and J on a Mac you get a copy of the layer like so and we're going to create a monochrome version of this copy to create our infrared effect. Infrared black and white pictures have very distinctive properties like glowing white foliage and we can do that on this top layer here. And the command we're going to use is enhance convert to black and white and that gives us access to lots of different presets and they're going to use the colour information in the shot to create the monochrome version. For example, you can see we've got the sliders in certain positions here. If I move over here, you can see the values. Red is on 60, green's on 28, and blue is on 12. You'll also see those values if you move like so. And usually, they all add up to 100 to make sure there's no overexposed details. So this scenic landscape option gives us a fairly standard black and white version with some dark shadows, mid-tones and bright highlights. But if we click on infrared effect like so, it boosts the greens much much brighter and you can see we're blowing out the highlights now in these green areas to create the wood effect that you get with infrared photography. So that is a cool way of creating a classic infrared look. It's a little bit over the top though so what we're going to do is tweak these sliders manually to try and just reduce some of this blown out area here. So what we're going to do is reduce the strength of the reds to try and just claw back some detail in these warmer areas because it's actually quite yellowy. So what we'll do is drag the slider to the left and if you let go it'll give you a value. It's going to be around about 33 there and we want something like plus 
28. So we'll move it again, move back over it, and that's 11, so drag it to the right. So it's very hit and miss, as you can see, to try and get a precise value. Photoshop CS has got a much easier way of adjusting your black and whites using color values, but here it's a bit hit and miss, but we're there at 28. So that has actually taken down some of the brightness of the reds, and you can now see a little bit more detail here in these blown out areas. Move over here to check those values. Red will now be on 28, green's 140, and blue is minus 80. Now, if we darken the blue even more, we can darken the blue skies and make these more dramatic infrared skies you get, which makes the lighter clouds pop up a bit. So we drag the blue slider to the left. We're after about minus 115. You can see it's darkening the blues already, and that value is minus 93. So go a little bit further down, move back on again, minus 111, a tiny little tweak should do the trick at minus 113 so again fairly hit and miss and don't worry if you're not exactly on the values that we're after I'm going to try and get it by uh, moving again there we go that's at 116 I'm going to live with that and you can see now we have darker blue skies we're now ready to click OK to apply the effect to the layer and that gives us a classic black and white infrared effect. We're going to actually add some colour techniques as well in a bit but first of all we just want to restore some more of these blown out areas here. To do that I'm going to click on the background layer, press Ctrl or Command J to make another copy and we'll just open that up a little bit to see all of the layers together and now I'm going to go and choose Enhance again, back to Convert to Black and White once more. This time we'll take Scenic Landscape and click OK and you can see we've got more detail there now in those areas and we can now click on the top layer and add a layer mask and then blend these little sections here with the correctly exposed ones on the layer below using brush tips so let's go and grab the brush tool from the tools palette like so pop up and choose a nice 300 size brush make the opacity 10 percent and then click on the layer mask make sure you've got a black foreground color you can click here to make sure that's the case and then when you're on this layer mask here you can click and spray the 10 percent brush that puts a gray stroke on the mask and that gently reveals some of the correctly exposed detail from the background copy layer below like so the next thing to do is to make sure we're clicking on this top layer here and we can then go to layer and merge those two down to create one monochrome layer with the correct exposure but with a nice wood effect that we've got as well and then we can add a layer mask to that so we can then start to blend the color and the black and white layers together so click here again and there's our layer mask and because it's white that means that it's revealing all of the detail on the attached layer it's only when we start to put black on there that we start to make holes through this layer to the color layer below now in the previous step we used a brush tip to make holes in this top layer here but we're going to use a different tool this time the gradient tool pop up to the editor here click on foreground to background just to make sure it's on that particular preset click OK then we're going to choose a radial gradient which is this circular shape here and then we can click on the background layer mask here and then we can drag from the center out to the edge and that will create a black to white gradient and the black bits make a hole in this top layer revealing some of the color detail on the layer below but at the edge there where it gets lighter we're seeing some of the original black and white detail so we've got a mixture of this nice infrared effect with these dramatic dark clouds blending through to some color detail on the very lowest background layer like so now you're ready to tweak the colors to create a more infrared looking color palette and to do that we're going to click here and choose a hue saturation adjustment layer which will appear at the top we can then dock this to the bottom like so and move these up so they're floating together so let's get those lovely cyan skies associated with color infrared by going to the blues channel like so and dragging hue down to minus 39 just to create that cyan -y tint to our original blue skies we can push the saturation up to about 56 as well just to try and make the colors a little bit more noticeable there we go and you can see a nice cyan sky color palette appearing now and you can try darkening the sky a little bit as well by taking the lightness slider left to around about minus 18 now to tint these yellows a more orangey color which is more typical of infrared we can go to the yellows and then we can tweak the hue here by dragging this to minus 30 and you get this lovely orange color palette that's associated with color infrared photography let's pop back to the master channel now and let's just take down the master saturation just to make the colors a little bit more subtle around about minus 14 should do the trick 
OK, as a finishing touch, I'm just going to tweak the levels by creating a Levels Adjustment layer. And we can darken the shadows by dragging this to the right to around about 11, just under the histogram there. And we can lighten up the midtones a wee bit by dragging this slider to the left to about 1.10. And you can see it's a very subtle tweak for the tones there, but it just helps the contrast a little bit. Tab to get rid of the floating windows, and there is our surreal colour infrared image.